I want to talk about the experience that uh, you recently had. And I know in our last uh, segment, we were actually talking about an experience that you had. And it's just interesting how it just keeps on progressing. So um, you were having, well, you had been having some processes done and openings and expansions and everything. And yeah. then you started having having um, what was going on in your heart uh, chakra? Was it uh, tightening? Well, tensing yeah, it was. Down? It was a tightening in the center, and it had started a few days earlier when we had um, when we were working with the heart chakra and blending the the pink and the green colors. Oh yeah, the yin and yang came uh-huh. together into that yin and yang mm-hmm. kind of symbol, and and. Um, what I experienced after that, you know, like the next day or two, I experienced a real tightening mm-hmm. in my, right in the center of my chest, right in yes. the center of the heart chakra. Right. And I had felt it kind of starting when I was doing that work, but it was, mm-hmm. it almost just felt like something was incomplete, like something yes. mm-hmm. was sort of stuck there. So you and I went into another process around that. Oh, we did. And and, and this is so yeah. fascinating because um, so as I was being present uh, with her, um, also the, the throat chakra had come up because there was something that was wanting to be communicated yeah. and expressed. But what happened was I was actually guided to um, go into the sacral plexus chakra. And that's the yeah. second chakra. And so the work actually had to be done within that chakra. And so yeah. whenever um, I did the remote work in that chakra, she said, what was it? It was like immediately or so the heart cleared up. Yeah, it opened so up. Af- yeah. Mm-hmm. And what we had seen there was um, when I settled into and focused on the heart chakra, I saw it was almost like a magnet mm-hmm. um, turned like two magnets turned the opposite way. So they weren't attracting each other. They were right. repelling. And, um, and then as I, as I looked deeper into that, it was around a person that had been in my life before. Yes. And that was actually in the same and, room. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what, what took us into the same room, I think was mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. of a sudden it was relationship based mm-hmm. and it was, um, and, and so that tension in the heart was that person trying to come in and not being aligned. Mm-hmm. And they're not with aligned anymore. With, yeah, for this. Yeah, they were. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, they were at one point very aligned. Right, right. And um, but now I was seeing that as they want, and I they've been out of my life for a year or so. Mm-hmm. But as they wanted to come in, it was like I could just tangibly feel the lack of alignment there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this this is not a relationship that that it was just a, a drifting apart. There was no tension. There was no. Mm-hmm argument there was no conflict within that it was just a drifting apart life you know his life kind of went one direction my life went another direction Mm -hmm. and but it was just interesting to experience that in my life taking on a different direction Mm -hmm. the impact that it had on on deep within my body on that relationship and my approach to the that relationship Mm -hmm. right and how that relationship was causing this tension in the heart chakra Right, right. Oh. And and what was so interesting is because the newer work had been done and so much had been taking place. And then you have, um, I don't even want to call it remnant, so to speak, but it is just, you know, someone trying to make their way into a trajectory where they actually don't fit. Yeah. And so, exactly. but what was the great news is that as the clearing was taking place and working in, in the sacral because that person at one point was instrumental in some of the creativity aspects and different things. And so they were trying to sort of get in through that gate. And, um, and so the work that was being done was where the recoding had taken place. So that person wouldn't be able to bump into that trajectory anyway, not even through the body work. But what was so fascinating is that as that was taking place, then your new tribe, of sunflowers yeah. that we talked about in um, the the last segment, you know your your new yeah. tribe of solar uh, solar plexus, um, yeah, you know the, solar the plexus and the sunflower and the sunflower, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but they, you know, that the expansion of them and that community 
um, you know, expanding and everything. So it was yeah. really fascinating. But I guess the thing I really wanted to most bring up uh, in this particular segment uh, in terms of experiencing, you know, the chakras anew is that uh, here you were having um, that tightness that had been going on for a day or two or so. And then instead of us working directly in yeah. the chakra and even going into a different dimension of the heart chakra, we worked in in the sacral. Yeah. Uh, like and in huge. different dimensions of the sacral chakra. Yes. And then that cleared up what was in the heart. In the so, heart. so the thing about it is, is that um, these processes are not always linear. And so that's what also others who work with the energy body, work with the chakra system, have to be aware that, you know, sometimes you're trying to address certain levels within chakras because you could feel that one is blocked in the energy or so, or it could be even what the client or so is telling you that's what's going on. And you can think, well, okay, so I need to go directly into that chamber into the wisdom there or start to do the process there but life and the way things work are more like um, reflexology if you're familiar with reflexology or acupressure um, but primarily reflexology you know um, on the foot and on the hands there are different uh, pressure points that you massage you you okay. press and they stimulate well-being to other areas of the body so like with foot reflexology if you start touching on a certain area, it's, you're not actually working directly on the organ that yeah. is needing stimulation. So it's a, it's not a linear thing. You work one area, but it's, it's generating well-being to another. So right. the same that sometimes you can uh, someone can have something going on in a certain area, but you may be called to actually work in a different chakra and also maybe to do some work in some of the different um, bodies within the energy body. So you could be very well working with the etheric temple. You could be working um, with the emotional body, the casual body, you know, the, the physical body, the etheric body, uh, you know, the astral body. You, you may be called to actually work in one of those areas where even though it seems apparent that there's a specific area that is needing attention. But again, you have to be present. It is not always linear. And I think, yeah. you know, Brenda Lynn, a lot of times the reason why certain modalities or, or certain work doesn't have those long lasting effects with people, especially around the chakras, is yeah. because of the linear thinking format that the practitioner or facilitator is trying to guide um, the individual through and then consistently going back working in that particular area where there actually could be that they need to do something different. Um, and sometimes I brought up reflexology. Sometimes um, you have to work the chakra points that are on the hands and, and then, the, yeah, or even on the feet. And so again, this work gets extensive in a way uh, where we just can't think in those, you know, in those traditional formats, you may be called to do something else. And, you know, I worked with the chakras for over 20 years yes. and, and I have gone into different dimensions yes. and seen the relationship, um, more known the relationship between mm -hmm. the chakras and mm -hmm. worked with some of that, but never, never to the depth mm -hmm. and the breadth of what we're doing in these new mm -hmm. dimensions of, you know, where, where right. you've taken me into these new dimensions mm -hmm. and really, um, taking on a whole different vibration, a whole different level of wisdom that that has been revealed mm -hmm. as we've gone deep into these multiple dimensions of each of the chakras mm -hmm. and seeing, the, like you say, that powerful relationship between the various different bodies and the different mm -hmm. chakras and the different dimensions of the different chakras. Right, right, it's, right. It's almost like, you know, like, like taking a, um, a two-dimensional puzzle, a regular <laughs> puzzle piece, and then all of a sudden seeing it grow right, into right, a 3D right. image. Yeah, um, and beyond, sort of what, right? <laughs> yeah, that's sort of what I've been, um, like what I've been experiencing with the chakras is they have taken on a depth that I was never aware existed. And right. I think for many of us, it didn't exist until right. the planet started to shift and evolve. 